I'm going to uh, redo the scene, uh, the painting from yesterday, the pastel colored one. Um, this painting is is uh, not very difficult at all to do. All right, it just plays on the basic concept of light and shade. All right, and I'm gonna start off with my customary <laughs> shampoo and water mix. I'll saturate. Um, actually, no, I will not do that first. I just soak the brush. Oh well. If it doesn't dry up and cake up, I'll just use it later. I wanted to start this from the beginning instead of um, doing part of the painting and then leave you guys guessing. So what I'll do is I'll start from the very beginning and uh, we'll work from there. I have a series of natural sponges which look like this. I got short for both cameras. Alright, just natural sponges. And what I do is I'll dip it in my black ink. Alright. I'll point that up to you here. I'll just keep it right here. And whatever side you want to use for the plants, you just dip it right in there. I don't soak the sponge. Just dip it in. Give you whatever pattern. Okay. And I will just dab like so. Hey Pam, how are you doing? Hello Michelle, oh, I got a little family affair. What's going on Bill? How are you doing out there in Arizona? It's got to be pretty early out there. It's 10 o'clock here, so it should be about 7 in the morning out there. <coughs> 7 or 6. Okay, so I'll let a little bit of that dry. Now, uh, when I put the, the trunks and the branches in, they're put on pretty thin, so they'll dry almost immediately. I got just a few select patches left on here. All the rest is pretty much dry here. Okay, see, that's dry. Just little patches that I really don't want to mess up. It's just so. a rendition of this thing here. All right. Start off the very same exact way that I did with this picture. Start off just like this. All right. This is just a technique. Um, what I'm showing you. Hello, Bobby. How are you? This is just a technique that I'm showing. That's all. Um, you can apply this style of painting to uh, buildings, obviously woods and fauna, whatever. Um, anything really, even figure drawing, whatever. Um, hey, Joe. There you are. I was waiting for you. Um, but you can apply this technique. To anything okay well Joe um, I just started off using a sponge but you'll catch it if you catch the video again I'm making a um, a YouTube video at the same time I'm doing the live stream so if you don't catch all of it here then you you know you can uh, go on my site later on today it'll be uploaded and edited and all of that so as I was saying um, you can add add this technique to whatever uh, type of painting, even sea, uh, sea painting. Alright, this is just a technique I'm showing you. I just happen to be using a wood uh, scene, applying the techniques I'm going to show you right now. Okay, okay, I believe enough of this is dry where it won't look totally crazy. I am going to apply my shampoo water mix. I use this instead of the um, instead of this stuff. Yes, I have this stuff too, the golden uh, glazing liquid because of the difference in price. To be quite honest with you, and even if I can afford to buy tons of that stuff, I probably wouldn't. It's just a little high for you know something like that. Alright, we're going to go right to it right now. What I'm going to do is glaze over the whole thing. As you can probably see. 
I put it on a little thick. Don't matter. It dries up anyway. Okay, that's it. That's all I need to do. That's what you see. Alright. And I'm just cleaning off my brush real quick here. Put that away. I will dip into my white and into my I do have just regular purple paint here but I'm dipping into both white and purple I'm gonna start off at the center just like so as you can see and I'm going right in to the black I'm using uh, four colors, uh, purple, cad red, ultramarine blue, sap green I believe, and white, that's it, okay, alright, let's put this guy away, I won't be needing him anymore, at least I don't believe I will, alright, let's start with the, uh, I got my number eight flat brush. Now, while this is drying, and most of it is dry, I am going to use nothing but the darker purple. You do this in stages from back to front. All right. Now, you also have to get into your mind um, about all this black. Just because it's black doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be in the front. Not so. All right. You'll see it after a while. We're going to add some uh, some branches uh, and some trunks of trees, just like that. And you have it come out there like so. You know, just regular trunks and branches. You don't have to have many. Have them kind of crooked, spaced out or whatever. Doesn't matter. Have some up here. Let's go on the other side. I won't put too many. You won't really necessarily need too many of them. Let's put one going this direction out here. And have a branch out this way. Maybe slinking around there. Let's have let's have a couple going this way out here like that. And maybe out here. Let's make that one a little taller. Okay. Mmm, we'll have, uh, well, let's, have, let's bring him down there. Oh, uh, shoot that one there. Let's shoot one out here. Something like that. That's all you need to do. Okay. <coughs> this is a technique. This is going to be a repetitive process, which you're seeing me do with this first one, with the purple back here. All right. Get yourself your favorite type of brush. You want to do whatever kind of leaves um, on these guys. All right, I'm just using, once again, straight purple. No more, no less. And with your leaves, however you want to do them. Of course, someone's going to call me right now. And I'm going to decline it. All right. As I was saying, however you want to do your leaves, Right over the black. Alright. And patches here and there. A lot of this, like I say, will be kind of quick because it's more of an optical illusion, optical effect. Let's put some bushes up in here. Have it kind of almost disappear in there. A little heavier in here. And we're going to go on the other side. We're going to do the same exact thing. Whether you're left-handed or right. Just tap away. 
strategically put them, place them where you want. And remember, acrylic paint, it sets darker than what you see. So as it dries, it'll darken up. Let's put some bushes in there, like so. Get them kind of sparse toward the center, heavier here in the back, just like so. Now, as I'm doing this, there, I'm going to dip a little white into it, and we're going to highlight a few of these. Right where you see it's darkest, that's where you put some of the highlights in. Never mind about trying to highlight it where it's already lit. All you do is just matching the same color you already laid before it, and that's not going to make any sense. So do it where it's dark. All in here. Try to follow. Get a little brighter there. And do the same thing on the other side. I kind of want a little hill type of thing going on. This is not totally white. It is purple. If I put white next to it, you would see the definitely would see the difference. Like I say, where it's dark, that's where you add your highlight. And you bring your highlights toward the lit area in here. Now I'm doing it with my right hand, I might block a little bit. So I'll be careful. I'll just angle the brush a certain way here. Okay, but well that's one layer done. And we're going to go for the next. We're going to do the same exact thing. No problem, Joe. Hello, Ashley. How are you? Good morning. If you guys are getting little, little errors or whatever, just refresh the screen. And you should come right back. In a perfect world and in theory. Alright, now, got our light purple, got the deeper purple uh, foliage or whatever. We're going to go for the next uh, color, uh, deeper color, and remember you're coming towards the front. Alright, so you got your light lavender, you got your darker version of that color. So the next step would be a, um, would be a blue um, color, but what I'm going to do is take the same brush. And instead of deep ultramarine blue, I'm going to mix that blue with the purple. Alright, so it'll be a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the purple mix. Get a little more on the purple side for me here. It is deeper color. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. Any color that you want and have a pastel look, you just want to add white to it. Alright, I just added white. And we're going to do some more right on top, but not going to, you're not going to destroy all of what you have here. All right. And you're going to do it right on top here. Right on top of some of those guys. A little further into the black. little sparse here in the center. I'm going to get some more purple. Mix it in with the tiniest touch of blue. And we're going to go on the other side with this. Right, oh, right around in here. Get some more. darker the color, the further back towards this area you'll be, because you don't want to totally overpower what you've previously laid down, okay? And we're going to do the same thing with this color that we did with the previous color. You will add a lighter version of what you've already laid down, which is just adding white, okay? And I'm 
going to add white right now to the purple bluish mix. And you repeat the same process. Just adding more white. Now, to you, it may appear white, but it, believe me, it's just not. And I'm, let's, let's go for a different look here on the bottom. Let's get a slight push. It's a little sparse up in here, but you're further in now. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Just give it a little lift, push, lift, like so. I'll show it to you what it looks like in a complete darkness. See that? You just group them together. And we're going to continue on with the foliage. <coughs> Still want to keep and maintain that bright. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. That enough. All right. We have yet another layer. All the layers I'm adding, there's um, there's color. The, the colors that are mixed are in each respective layer. There's blue and purple. Okay, and there's um, there's blue. Actually, there's blue into purple. When you mix red, you get this color. All right. Now, if you're mixing, mixing blue with uh, yellow, you're gonna get green, which is the next color we're gonna do. All right. This green will be a, uh, a more pastel uh, green. That's the next color I'm gonna use. Okay. And I'll add. The tiniest bit of blue in this green because we're getting closer towards the front of the painting so it'll be a little deeper and even though I'm mixing this deep green uh, color with the blue mixed in I'm adding white to still make it <coughs> a little past a little pastel since it's a deeper color remember we're going further back so you don't really destroy um, everything that you've already laid down but before I put that on there like I did with the um, previous color I'm gonna get a little bit of the purple tiny bit of blue and I'm gonna dip a little bit into the lotion the shampoo mix here loosen up the paint a little and we're gonna sneak in a couple branches even in here little more blue. That's too purple. Let's give him some blue here. We'll pop out a couple in here. If you do not see it, that's also fine. Then we add highlights. My highlight's gonna have to be a little stronger white. And it's too too thick. Let's narrow that a little bit. Just here and there. Usually would have more of an effect if it's darker. And I'll add some more on the other side here. Just a few. Okay, you just want the hint of it. You don't want to draw the entire thing. Okay, let's go on with Mr. Green here. I'm just tapping on this color, and we're going to start. Let's put some wrap in front up in here. Put some down up in here like that. Getting some more green. A little bit more blue. And we're going to touch it up a little bit of white. 
just to lighten it up just the slightest bit. You don't want to destroy what you have previously, but you want to run some of that into the other colors. I'm not going to go towards the ground area yet. I got another brush for that. But we are going to go on the other side. I'm angling on the brush. It's going to look like that. You tap it in a certain direction. You see that angle? Okay. So it looks like this. Yes, all I'm doing is touching it. Don't have to be any specific way. It all depends on what type of tree you're looking to do. Also. I can do the same thing with pine trees. It will give a totally different look to it. Obviously. I don't want to destroy all the black either. The black actually helps with the depth of the trees. Okay. Oh, let's cover some of that up in here. Let's have something lingering out here like that. Alright. Hello Wanda. How are you? Believe me, I put my brushes through their paces. They all need psychiatric counseling when I'm done with them. Okay. Let's put some up around here. But I do want them in the back back there. I was going to rinse it off, but I'm not. Let's add some highlights while I still have the brush. Highlights, obviously brighter than what you just layered down. And pick and choose your highlights carefully. I want them in a circular motion aiming some I'll keep within and keep the outside uh, rim dark so I won't necessarily highlight everything just pick and choose and I'm stroking in one direction with the highlight so the brush is angled twirl the brush so you can see it there like that I have to do it for both cameras I'm making a YouTube video and I'm doing a live stream at the same time Wanda it's that kill two birds with one stone deal while you let me turn it the other way here there we go while I'm doing this I'm also checking out Let's go another direction here. There we go. As you can see, I'm playing around with it as I'm doing it, twirling it in different directions. Okay. Just like so. Alright, enough of that. Let's go to the other brush here. Just rinsing out the brush here. So on the YouTube version of this, obviously it will be edited and cut or sped up. Alright. Live version, you're just going to have to deal with me. But you'll be okay, I promise. Okay. Let's get this path going. I am going to mix. Well, I was. Until I realized I don't have any. So let me pour some in there real quick. I'm going to mix um, a little bit of purple. And a little bit of green and I'll slowly put a little white in there it'll give me the color I need for my uh... actually I got green on here so I'll just use the purple and the green that I have laid out already it'll give me a gray purple and green makes gray 
tap a little bit of white into it. So I'll get started on <coughs> Mr. Path. Let's have the path well, much like the other one. I'm going to have it come this way. A little sparse at first. Let's have it curve around here this time. And it gets a little heavier. It's more green. It's more purple. And it gets a little heavier around here. Let's curve it. Curve, 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 curve. Right off the page. Let's go. Let's have it go this way this time. More of a, of a curved shape than the other one. Right around in here. We'll keep it like that. Okay. Let's add just a light touch of white. Very light. I'll just stroke a couple highlights in there, here and there, till I really pay it, give it my full attention. Just tap it in a little bit brighter here. And like so. Okay, enough of that. <coughs> I just want to place there just for placement. Now we'll get on to uh, adding the grass and a little bit of a hill. Using this gigantic mutated flat uh, number 12 brush. This creature right here. This long stemmed thing. Alright. We'll get more into our green. A little bit of blue into the green. Touch of white with it. If I really wanted it saturated with white, it to get that pastel look. Uh, let's have a little hill, starting from uh, right there. Do one of those Bob Ross things, tap away. Don't want to destroy all your blacks. Okay, much like that. Getting some more green. Getting a touch of blue into that green, just mix it up a little bit. I kind of like little dark patches in here. And some surrounding that up in there. Like so. And we're going to do the same thing here. So get the darker green right up in there. And we're going to go in the same direction. This time add a little bit of white to the mix I have. And it go in the same direction. Kind of a I'm going to take white, I'm pressing down on the white pretty good, open up the bristles, and just a slight touch, like so, and maybe someone here, and do the same thing, well, let me do it with my, my right hand. Just a slight touch, a slight push, come out here, the angle, obviously, downward towards the path, alright, I'll put some up in here, just get some highlights, a uh, few of them in there like that. Yeah. Turn here, turn it on the side, do the same thing, a couple of those out there. All right, like that. Okay, as you can see, you got the lightest lavender, darker version of it for your bushes and trees. Then you go to the next scale down, which is the blue. I mixed the blue in with the purple, which gives you that look. All right. Go to the next scale, which will be in the greenish realm, because blue is in green. Follow me. All makes sense? Okay. Now that I've done that, I can also, uh, let's get the half inch brush this time. Let's put some, uh, 
I have purple here now. So I'm gonna use a little bit of a little bit of purple into the green. We're gonna add some trunks. They're gonna be a little larger. And I might want them a shade darker too. So a little blue, green, and purple. And let's put a few of them. Let's put some dark ones in there. Let's put a few right up in there like so. Let's get a little more green. A little more purple. A little more blue. More purple. And we're going to have little branches shoot out here. A couple of them shoot that way. And let's have some branches come up here this way. Well, let's put a couple more right in here. I'm going to, if they're too dark, you can't see them, I'll, I'll highlight them. One on the other side. You don't. You just don't need too many of them right now. Let me put some snaking around that way. Like I said, I'll highlight a couple of these. Okay. Let's get some white. Thin sliver of white white green mix it will appear white anyway it just your eyes just get fooled by it okay a little more just highlight a few of them the highlight obviously will go towards the lavender area and we're gonna snake a few little details in here like so as you can see, this painting isn't really too difficult to do. All you're doing is playing on what happens in nature in a way. It's just a, a play on light and dark. And when I say light and dark, that doesn't necessarily mean totally black and white. Okay. Tints, hues. If you want to add tint to a color, you add white. Shade to a color, you add black. Alright, that's tint and shade. A hue is the depth of color in that particular color. Uh, a hue is like this light green with a darker green, all this in here, but it's the same color, still green. Same thing with the uh, blue or the purple and the blue purple mix, all the same thing. Alright. OBKB. Let's move right along. Let's take I got a smaller brush for what I'm going to do next. Actually I need more white. I ran out. I didn't think I'd run out but I did. We're nearing almost the end of this thing. It's really that simple to do. Thank you Michelle. Okay. Let's get a little white going here. Come on, come on. To add interest to your painting. Your painting, I'm just showing you the technique of how it's done. It doesn't necessarily have to um, totally look like this. Alright. It could be um, whatever you want it to be. A beach scene with a lighthouse, you can still use the same uh, process. It's just your, your light and your lighthouse will be just a, a darker your light will be first obviously but your your lighthouse if you want it subdued in fog or whatever will be just a shade darker than this but make it recognizable as a lighthouse and then you put everything else in front of it atmospheric wise and that's pretty much the, the look you'll get okay oh uh, let's do oh there you are I'll use this one we're gonna put some cutesy little flowers in here to break up a lot of this because a lot of these colors that are, are here uh, as right now have each other in it all right um, blue the green has, uh, the blue has the green let's go from the back to the front lavender turns into purple purple makes it in turns into blue makes blue and with yellow turns it into green so each one of these is almost next to each other in the color wheel you got me which is why you get what you get uh, this type of harmonic thing going on here feng shui-ish stuff 
All right, enough of that. I don't want to hear no mandolins playing, no monk trying to sell me a pamphlet. We're going to mix a little bit of white, a little bit of red together. All right, this is my so-called make pretend rose bush. I would put a dot of it right here. And maybe another little patch right in here. And probably one off, the, right off the tape, right in there. And some on the side of the road here. Or the path, whatever you want to call it. Let's do the same thing here. Let's put some right up in there like that. Need a little more white. Got to have uh, some color variance in that. So, a couple of those in there. Maybe that little patch right there. I'm going to add a giant tree in here too. Don't worry, it's coming. Mm, you know what? Let's add a series of these guys right down the path here. Just keep going down. I kind of like it. I'm going to get them a little heavier here. Okay, enough of that. Let's get some blue ones going. Ultramarine blue. Same, the same deal. Add a touch of white with it, mix it in. Mix it, but just don't blend it. And let's, let's have a couple of those guys come a little closer, maybe around here. Sneak some back there. Put some back here. And maybe some higher up up here. A little too dark. Put some more white in there. The light brighten it up a little bit. Like so. Uh, let's give it a little push. It's had some hidden way up in here. That's cool. Yeah, fine. Good enough. Okay, clean that off a little. Alrighty, <coughs> let's try for, I think I always tend to put a, a giant tree somewhere on the right hand side. Let's do one on the left hand side. Alright, so we're going to use brown. We're going to use red. Brown and red, I mean uh, red and green, they're opposites on the color wheel, direct opposite, alright, slight touch of white, and let's put, let's put a giant limb somewhere, right about, who knows, mm. now I'm a lefty, technically you go from the bottom up, it's just more comfortable for me to go in this direction from the top down spread it out let, let it come out that way he's a big one so we're going to make that a little bit wider it comes wider as it gets toward the base obviously something like that I'm going to get a thin edge to my brush we'll tighten up some of that right in here Actually, I gotta just mix more. So, a little more red, a little more green, mix it right in there. If you find you have one color a little um, heavier than the other one, it's gonna take on the attributes of the color that you put down most naturally. But you can easily straighten it out. If it doesn't seem to match, give it a few seconds. Because remember, acrylic paint sets. When it dries, the color will appear deeper. So, don't fret, don't panic, don't cry. It will straighten out. Oh, let's get a nice branch of snaking out there. I need to get this lotion. Uh, shampoo makes in there thin this paint up a little bit. It just helps the paint flow better. Remember, I'm working on this uh, watercolor paper. So it will grab and tend to pull a little bit. And let's have one coming that way. And coming that way cross crisscross going all sorts of directions and have something that way let's do something a little lower and come out that way like so and let's have a branch out here as you can see when I'm doing stuff like that it just adds more to the perspective follow me 
this is not really rocket science. Uh, kind of follows the rule of nature. We see in three dimensions, but you're working on a one-dimensional surface, so you have to create the illusion of stuff appearing in front or in back of. All right. Okay. Enough of the science class. Get back to the painting. Adding a little white to the brown, grayish brown. And we're going to go in the direction of where the light source would be, which will be here. However you want to do your the pattern of your trunks, up to you. This is just for t training and teaching purposes, so it will be just a simple choppy line. I will get this brighter, actually. And I will probably use a smaller brush to get the uh, light details in with this guy. You can add leaves to this fellow too, which would be almost whatever uh, leaves you would choose with this guy, if you want to put them in there, they have to be obviously super dark and because it's closest to you. And the brights would be super bright to give that separation between everything else. Okay. Since I'm already using this brush, I might as well do some ref reflected light. So I use a little, little bit of blue, the tiniest bit of white, and a couple of hits here and there. Necessarily, I mean, in, in our uh, natural spectrum of color, we don't see a blue for a cast shadow. I just like the way it looks. I just don't try to go overboard with it, though. But it does give a pretty cool look to your art. Effects wise, anyway. You don't really need too many of these. On the thicker branches, whatnot. Like I said, I'm going to highlight still the other side with a thinner or smaller brush. I think I'll stick with the, uh, the, the big tree on that one side. I think I added two on the other one. Okie dokie. Let's get to a... Let's get to the liner brush. I'll use the liner brush. I want a, an extremely bright uh, highlight to this guy. And I'll just use pure white. It will be used sparingly just on the outside edge in here. Maybe a little thicker than that. A couple on the inside. Not too much, really. Turn the brush around. You got, other, you got more paint on one side of the brush. If it breaks apart, that's fine. The, uh, the least perfect it looks, the better it, it appears. Okay. Just experiment. Some experiments you will like, some you will not. And you just know how to do it again. And you always correct. So. You know what, when to add a little more paint, a little less paint. All comes in practice. Be familiar with your brush, what you can and cannot do. But the only way to find that out is you gotta have to keep, you have to uh, just experiment. All right. I just have to be careful. I don't, I'm, I'm a lefty, so I tend to work backwards, so I don't want paint splashed all over my the palm of my hand I've done that a billion times and no doubt I will be doing it a billion more because that's just the nature of the beast all right that's good that's fine okie dokie then we have our little land we got a big tree okay as I'm looking checking things out let's put some uh 
get a little bit more green let's get a little more red with that green a little touch of blue within it gotta be careful when you add both three together because you will get black so be careful I'm gonna add some posts I don't know why I got this thing about painting in posts I just do um, post fetish I guess alright let's do very sparingly up here put a couple there and they get a little a little larger as you get closer get a little thicker, a little taller. Some I'll have maybe going off a little crooked. Let's put a big one here. And let's have him going off the side like that. Just adds character. Let's have a nice size one right in here. Matter of fact, have him come off the page. Get some more green, get some more red, more green, touch of blue, nice dark dark one here. No medium, just the painting itself. Let's put um let's put a nice one. Uh let's put a nice one like right here. Big one. Right in here. Go right off the tape. Just like that. Nice and dark one. We're going to go on the other side. Oh. Right about. Let's make the path a little larger. Coming toward us. So we're going to make a big one right here. Right off the tape. Like that. Now. With the preceding limbs. Starting on, on that side. Now the camera flipped on the phone. So. When I say the right side is probably the left for you guys. And we're gonna start, remember they have to go smaller than this guy. Everybody else is smaller and maybe a little closer. Alright. So let's let's do another one slightly smaller, slightly shorter. He can go off the page too. Like so. And then we'll put we'll start putting them on the edge of the path, like right there. It gives your eyes somewhere to track. Because if it does not appear right, your eyes will let you know. It just sets your whole mood going, mood going south. And like something's not right. Something doesn't look right. And let's go. Let's start putting it off right. A little bit smaller. A little bit lighter. Well, obviously, you're not going to see the rest, so that's about it. Okay. I'm going to use a little more medium than paint. A little more medium than paint. I want to get a glaze. Because then we'll start putting nice little, little trails of shadows and all that good stuff around. Uh, maybe some of the maybe some of the trees got a little... So you put patches in there somewhere, even in the grass a little bit. And you darken it up in certain spots, like so. Remember, you more glaze, and when it dries, it'd be a thin film of, of color. And you can, if you want, put a couple of them coming that way into the grass a little bit, like so. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Hey, Vanessa, how you doing, girl? Yeah, watch it on YouTube if you keep losing connection. Hey, Vanessa. Okay, while we're doing this, because we're getting toward the final bit here, add a little white to my uh, little brush. I don't have to stroke down with these guys. I just a little, little tap like that. Just tap, 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 tap. It gives you the texture you're kind of looking for. A little tap. Okay. I want that a little brighter. Much brighter. Yeah, like that. I'm just 
Tampa for you. Same thing on this guy on this side. Maybe even on this side. You do the same thing down here with some of these guys. Not all of them. One of them a little brighter. Over on this side here. Same thing with you. Alright, we're getting into my blue. Didn't even take the white off. And it gives us this freaky weird shadow color over here. This weird radioactive blue looking thing. I just like the way it looks aesthetically, so that's why I do it. You don't necessarily have to do your backlight like this. Well, let's put a couple on that side here. A few here. Something like that. Uh, we'll play with, arm with a couple of them here, too. Okay. We're almost there. We're almost there. Almost. I'm going to do something a little different on this one that I did not do on the other. Just because... Well, quite frankly, just because. All right. I'm taking my script liner. I'm getting into my blue. And a little bit of my red. Get a little bit more blue. Mixing it together pretty well. Then I will wet my highlighter. Script liner. It's not a marker. I think I got my uh, Ben Grimm painting. I'm thinking about that thing. Every time I do one of those superhero deals, the painting community gets a little hush. Uh, they still look down on comic art as not being true art. And they really need to be ashamed because those guys have to learn how to paint everything. Or not paint, but um, draw everything and make it look convincing and got to do it with a very tight schedule. Let's put some barbed wire on this group of guys here. I didn't put none on the other ones, but we'll do one on here. Let's go on the other side. Let me water it down a little bit more. Get this paint a little thin. Almost to the consistency of ink. We're about 98% finished here. I just wanted to, uh, there we go. And if you really want to be picky, if you have a steady enough hand, you put highlights on the wires too. But that will look crazy. If you're unsure about your perspective, I think I have a, a clip on that on YouTube also. Hopefully my head is not in the way of me doing this. And just aim that one slightly up, like that. Twirl the brush around. Okay. I did not change the uh, paint. I did not uh, rinse it off. Do my left-handed thing and paint upside down. A little bit of highlight right on the top of some of these guys. Get it pretty bright here. Even if you have to do a couple of milli inches at a time. You don't have to highlight the entire strand. But just enough to see that your eye can catch it. It sees it. Don't have to do every one. I think I'll do a strand or two on the other ones here. Where it's pretty dark. Okay, good enough. Well, I think I put an owl in the other one. And I think I put a couple of creature's eyes in the other one too. So, let's uh, 
Let's put some uh, let's put some eyes in there, right around here. Maybe another small set of eyes looking like that. We'll put a big guy right right in here. He's staring right at you guys. Mm. Yeah, we've got a smaller one right here. I did put a, I put an owl in somewhere on the other side over there. I did do an owl. Okay, this one will be owl-less. All right. Just sign my name. I would like to. Uh, I'm talking to the YouTubers here. I like to thank you for spending the hour and few minutes of your time watching me do this. If you like what you see, write on the comments below. If you don't like what you see, write on the comments below. If you would like to try this painting out, please put it on my wall and my YouTube channel or my uh, Facebook page. You will see the. Uh, the link on the bottom of the screen somewhere by my head and I would love to see your rendition of it and thank you happy painting God bless and I will see you again soon that is for my YouTubies as far as the live Facebook guys once again thank you for spending your time with me on this Friday morning when I do them this early, and if I don't have, have, have anything really going on, I end up doing another painting. I uh, don't know if it would be live streaming. It all depends on how I feel, what my mood is at that present time. But I'll be waiting for this totally dry. I'll lacquer it, and I'll uh, put, it on the, put it on the page. Then I'll edit the YouTube version of it. So all of that will be done later on today. Okay. Once again, not necessarily the importance is not necessarily the painting, but it is the. Um... Hey, Becca. It is the concept of all of this and how it was done. Now, if I really wanted to be nitpicky about it, I can actually, even though it's done, I could take a light uh, form of purple and white. And, and, and the soft brush and, I, and just do circles all the way around if I want if I really wanted to okay and I could have added another layer of, um, of foliage to make it even darker if I wanted to all right but I think this is good enough I think it's pretty cool like I said I wanted to show you how it was done you guys can take it and really run with it all right I'll take off the tape so you see what it looks like with the border. I think the border on the paintings kind of gives it a more of a professional quality, uh, prettys it up a whole lot. It is a pull lift method so you don't shred up the thing, but then again I'm working with paper. Alright, if you guys got canvas. Um, you won't be going through what I'm going through right now. You just you tear the thing right off. I got a different perspective on tearing it down since I'm sitting. So, if I did not answer any of your questions uh, to the live guys, I'll just scroll and, and uh, check it out and see what's going on. All right, but anyway, there you have it. All right, so that's how to do the atmospheric perspective deal. Got a little path with some uh, barbed wire posts going on. You got some creepy crawlies looking at you, and all of that good stuff. Cause you know October's coming up, so I might bust out with a Halloween uh, um, tutorial of something pumpkin head, or I don't know what I'll do. I'll do something. But I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you very much for checking this out. For those of you who didn't stay along, um, it'll be reposted and you got to look at it at your leisure. My name is Anthony Gray, a uh, live version of, uh, of uh, Grayscale. And I will see you soon online. And uh, 
I appreciate you and thank you very much. I'll check you later. Hello, Alec and Fitzgerald. And I'll see you guys later. All right? Peace.